whisperers on the shingles. In the erstwhile serene town of Cliffhaven, nestled between the embrace of dense whispering pines and the undulating kiss of the coastal fog, an eerie disquiet began to weave itself into the fabric of the once peaceable nights. It started with the subtlest of disturbances, mere pitter-patters on the rooftops and as if the delicate feet of crows had mistaken the shingles for the soil of the earth. But as the autumnal chill deepened, so did the intensity of these nightly visitations. The residents tried to dismiss it, attributing the sounds to the restless branches or the scuttling wildlife. Yet, deep down, an ancient dread began to bubble within their communal heart, a dread of those spoken of in hushed tones and with nervous glances towards the eaves, the roofwalkers. Elijah Greaves, Cliffhaven's seasoned sheriff, had believed he had seen everything that his town could throw at him. That was until the night Mrs. Henderson called, her voice a tinny mixture of fear and confusion through the crackling line, claiming that the demons were playing hopscotch on her roof. With a skeptical but reassuring tone, Elijah promised to investigate. As he drove down Rosemary Lane towards Mrs. Henderson's quaint Victorian home, he noticed his own gaze flitting upwards, almost expecting to catch sight of these so-called roof walkers. Upon arrival, the home was silent the moon a sharp crescent against the obsidian sky. Elijah's survey of the property yielded no signs of mischievous demons or anything else amiss. He chalked it up to Mrs. Henderson's growing isolation, and maybe a raccoon or two. It wasn't until he was back in his cruiser that he heard it, a fleeting scurry, followed by what could only be described as a soft chuckle dissipating into the night. Whispers spread throughout Cliffhaven, carried not by the wind but by the huddled conversations of its residents. Roofwalker tales became a perverse currency, each person eager to trade their own story of nocturnal disturbances for that of their neighbors. Among these conversations a name consistently emerged harking back to the old town legends, Old Man Cray, the hermit who resided at the fringes of town and who, some claimed, trafficked in more shadowy arts. It was said that Cray could traverse the night perched upon the roofs, listening to the secrets of the townsfolk. These roof-born rumors soon took physical form. Pets went missing. Strange markings appeared overnight on the weather vanes and chimney tops. And the children, once the embodiment of youthful boisterousness, adopted a timidity that was entirely uncharacteristic, refusing to step outside after dusk. The real panic took hold when the first of the townspeople went missing. Jonah Gershwin, an affable baker who had never heard a fly, vanished without a trace. His door, upon being forced open by Elijah and a band of wide-eyed volunteers, revealed a home untouched, but for a single disturbing detail, a trail of footprints leading from the fireplace to the ceiling and out the upper window. It was a sleepless night for Cliffhaven. Fearful eyes turned skyward, peering out of the corners of windows, dreading that whatever walked upon their roofs might find a way in. And through the silence of the thickening gloom, they could all hear it, the unmistakable sound of shingles being tread upon by something not quite human. The morning brought with it the courage of daylight and a resolve to face the terror. A town meeting was called at the church, its steeple casting a protective shadow over the gathered crowd. Old Man Cray stood at the periphery, his eyes like flint reflecting the community's agitation. Elijah stood before his town, the same people he had pledged to shield from harm. He proposed watch shifts, groups of volunteers to patrol the nights with an eye towards the roofs. There were mumblings, an air of dissent among the crowd. They wanted action, a solution. It was then that Cray stepped forward, his voice, dusty with disuse, slicing through the murmur. The walkers are not of this earth, nor are they unkindred from the darkness below. They simply desire what we all seek, acknowledgement. His gaze, steely and intent, challenged every person present. Leave an offering on the highest peak of your homes, a token of peace, and you may yet find the quiet of your nights returned. With that, Old Man Cray receded into the shadows from which he came. As the crescent moon waned into the new moon's invisibility, the once besieged town of Cliffhaven found its respite. Each home's rooftop adorned with an odd assortment of gifts the nocturnal trespasses ceased. Would-be skeptics might say it was the changing of seasons, the natural migration of some unknown critters. But the children, 
they knew the truth. The small handmade figures they left nestled between the valleys of the rooftops had disappeared entirely, traded in the silent pact with the roofwalkers for the, the promise to forget of the fear that once cascaded down their chimneys and into their dreams. And high above, if one strained their ear to the barest breath of the cliffside winds, they might have heard the softest of footsteps fading away, as the roofwalkers retreated back into the stuff of legends where they would slumber until the world called for them once more. In Cliffhaven, life resumed its tranquil rhythms. The roofwalkers resigned to the whispers of the pine and the caress of the fog. A tale to be told with a playful shiver and a glance upward on a still autumn night.